I'm Thomas Chu uh, from Hong Kong. Um, and currently, I work in uh, Charles University of Hong Kong as a professor. So my expertise is ad tech, and, and also we focus on AI. Um, so before uh, joining CHK, I mean Charles University of Hong Kong, I was a school teacher, and then um, I was the one of the person that to uh, help the government to develop ICT uh, policy. So, uh, of course, my background, other than teachers' uh, education, I also have a strong background in software engineering. So for my PhD, and then uh, I also develop a uh, platform, uh, is who I am. Yeah. So what I think about uh, AI in education, first, uh, AI is the technology. So I always use one, one term is, AI is alternative intelligence, not artificial intelligence. I mean, in education context, uh, for example, let's say that uh, ChatGPT comes to the place in the classroom. Uh, personally, ChatGPT is for entertainment. Uh, you know, most of the content that they are a lot like restricted to education purpose because in education, very different. We want a precise uh, content. We want some content that are appropriate for. Uh, the learner, particularly in the younger kid. So uh, first, I will see that AI as alternative intelligence. They come into place, they actually give you another perspective. So at the end, um, we say that students or teachers, they should be the one who make the final decision by considering all this kind of perspective from AI. Another example I can uh, further uh, elaborate this idea is, you know, we have adaptive learning environment, uh, AI may generate some content for you guys, uh, for learner, for teachers. Again, are they appropriate? I think that at the end, uh, I will say that um, teacher and students have to make a decision. Similar to YouTube, they recommend you some video. Uh, you are the one who makes decision. It, it is a good one for you. So how it change education is first change our student and teacher mindset. Uh, what do you think about uh, teaching and learning process and how they see this AI, um, what it is. So they are, we have to change the way how we think about the environment. Yeah. At the moment, there are a lot of people, especially students, using AI in, in, in their learning and teaching. So it is, it's a challenge. I think it is challenging uh, first. Uh, students using it a lot. Uh, many studies talk about 98% of students using it. But teachers kind of reviewing it. Uh, seem that, oh, teacher, I don't want it in the classroom. I don't want my students uh, to use AI to complete their tasks, assignments. So they have first, there's a gap there. Someone using it, someone using it. So how can we, I think, you know, reduce this gap? I think it's a it's a big issue. Um, so I think this is something that we have to address uh, because again, some people using it and some people try to stop it, then how can we do that? I think it's a, I think it's a current situation. Of course, another, another uh, area that I would say that, uh, as I say, uh, ChatGPT or many ad tech AI-based uh, tools, uh, they are not really uh, developed for student learning or teacher learning uh, teaching uh, in the very beginning. For example, let me give you some example, like Zoom. You know, in COVID, many people are using Zoom for teaching and learning online, but actually Zoom is not a educational tools. It is a video conferencing. I think a similar situation happening. So like uh, all the large language models, there are a lot of education. So how can we do that? I think, I think that this is another issue that uh, we have the address. So I think there are two things that I would like to mention about you know, the gap. First is teacher and student. Uh, they have a big gap there. Another one is the nature of the AI uh, tools. It's also a big problem. Yeah. So AI definitely impact our education. Uh, I mean, we always talk about teaching and learning, but our student mental health uh, well-being is also very important. Uh, I always say that um, you know when I share my idea of this 
uh, well-being uh, in AI uh, in the AI era, um, we have to mention that AI come to the places improve our teaching and learning. So they make our uh, teaching and learning more effectively. So we have more time. So what we can do? So another aspect is we have to encourage our students to do more. I would say that non digital environment. For example, they do more outdoor activities. They could be using AI, you know, some watches to monitor their activities there. You know, there's one of the tools that, okay, they, they have to move more. I would say that first, we have their big tech buttons. We have AI in place, improve our teaching and learning. So our students have more time, our teachers have more time. How can we change it to other activity which um, you know, benefit their health? mental health, physical health. I would say that you know, AI can help. For example, uh, you know, the watchers monitor their activities outdoor, um, and also yoga, sport, you know, that kind of thing. That I think that at first we have to switch, uh, encourage our students to do more uh, long tech activities. Then what can we do with AI? I mean, AI can help to monitor it, encourage them to do that. I think it's one of the area that maybe we can talk about. I think that um, AI definitely changed the skill that our students need. Uh, I think recently, I think the uh, World Economic Forum published one document talk about what kind of skill they, they need. Uh, there are some skills definitely because AI come here, they help us a lot to do all the mathematics, to do all the analysis. Uh, so what kind of skill that we need? Uh, I would say that uh, first is soft skill. Uh, uh, leadership and communication skill, and also AI definitely. Uh, data, I think this is something that AI cannot replace us. Uh, I think that it's a skill that we need. So a more human-centered education, yeah. AI definitely uh, impact our educational system. Uh, so you, you have to understand that uh, school and universities, they are very traditional very difficult to be changed, a lot like business. Uh, it takes uh, years to change. My philosophy is we cannot change their system, but the system will change for us. So as, a, um, as an education developer, I would say that um, we should do more, uh, we should develop more and show them the evidence. So I think that research is in a place that, that uh, you know, it is working. It's improving our student uh, learning, it improve their uh, competitive, I mean, they are more competitive in, in the job market, and then school and university will change for you, uh, change for us, change for the AI. So first, I would say that we don't change them. We let them change us by doing uh, more research, providing more evidence. I, I can share some sto successful story how we use uh, AI uh, to support student and learning. So um, one of the thing, one of the uh, advantage of AI, as I said before, is an alternative intelligence. So, like for example, um, student can create video or images without learning, uh, you know, all these multimedia software. So it's a very big advantage for project-based learning. So one of the successful that um, story that I would like to share is, is really, it's about the you know, student create their STEAM project, and then there are some some you know it's project based learning. Sometimes as a teacher, very difficult to cater every single uh, groups because they are very time consuming. It's not even though you can the teacher can help them, it's not that timely. You may take one week to respond their uh, questions or problem. So I think that uh, AI is there, always give them a perspective, like in terms of cooking, or um, you know, create a poster, video, they can help it. So I think that one of the uh, successful approach, I would say that is using AI to support interdisciplinary uh, learning, uh, which is, I think, project based is, uh, is part of it, yeah. I, I strongly believe that the development of EdTech uh, should have three stakeholder. One is the industry, uh, the other one is uh, uh, the user, which is usually the, 
uh, the teachers or students. And the third one, I would say the research, like university. So I think we have to develop uh, uh, a I call development approaches because we have to understand that industry, they always have their own, own consideration, which is money. And students are different. Students, oh, I want to have my conveniences, so they don't want to advance it. But students, I mean, the stu university or the research, they are the motivator. So I think that most of the development um, of ad tech, so include these three approaches. So I think this also leads to another one, it's called eva evaluation of the system. Uh, so again, if the industry, the only one that to solely assess their system, they will always say, always say good. Um, you know, teacher and student, they are kind of school are more traditional. Uh, they may stay back, oh, I don't want to do this. So the assessment is more negative, it's always like this. So again, research institute, uh, university, they can provide a more appropriate assessment method. Uh, I think that, again, this trial uh, um, partner uh, could be benefit to the development and uh, assessment of uh, any attack uh, development. I mean, the yeah, attack. Yeah. Uh, AI would definitely change the future of work. Uh, uh, I think in the future, I can see that uh, some jobs will be replaced. Uh, some will have more jobs. Uh, so I want to suggest that. Uh, again, education, other than skill, we also also talk about who we are. Uh, we have to be a good citizen. So education, we shouldn't forget that. Uh, but again, so we only focus on AI. Uh, I don't I, I don't think so. Uh, we should again. Uh, uh, I would say that create a learning environment that to help our student, the future worker, to learn with AI, uh, to work with AI. Even though that it's very important, learning with AI, working with AI, so what kind of skill that we, we want. Uh, for example, I want to bring up one term called AI competency. Uh, is AI competency is contextual. Uh, for example, a, as a teacher, you're using AI to teach uh, students, using AI to support student and learning. Maybe a cashier is different. I'm using AI to run a supermarket, uh, to work, using AI to run a, a convenience store. So if they have a different skill set, do they need to have a lot of AI knowledge? I don't think so. So I would say that um, we, the goal is help them to learn with AI, uh, help them to uh, work with AI. I think this is a big goal. But again, we don't only focus on technology. We also have to talk about um, their well-being. Uh, so we don't forget who, uh, as an I mean, educator, uh, I mean, who we are. I, I strongly believe that uh, e an ecosystem is very important uh, because at uh, first, um, many kids actually they are in school for eight hours, ten hours. Uh, we should have a AI education formal curriculum there because all of them. I would say that I really strongly suggest that we should focus on AI for all, so everyone have to do it. But again, um, uh, we have some students are more advanced, so I will call AI for some. So they may work with uh, some uh, service provider, you know, they have some platform, they you know, learn more outside the school. So another um, approach is AI for gift. Okay, they have more, they are actually want to learn more, and then they should up, you know, maybe subscribe some services to learn uh, you know, their AI uh, more, uh, better. So I think in a way that I would say that we, um, I suggest that we should have a free layer, AI for all, which is the school curriculum, AI for some and AI for give. I think that one, because school cannot do a lot, so they may have to, as uh, so a school may have to work with a, a service, other service provider to provide these two layer. Yeah, it's what I want to share. <laughs> yes. European and Asia have a very similar linguistic culture, because in Europe, we have different languages. Uh, Asia is also, because we have Chinese, we have Thai, we have, uh, you know, uh, Filipino dialogue, so it's very similar, this aspect. So uh, I think the kind of more accepted, you know, you, when you look at other country in Asia, I, oh, I, I'm, for example, for me, I, I'm from Hong Kong, uh, I'm more, 
more, you know, because I, when I go to Thailand, oh, I want to learn Thai, you, you want to be more open. I think it's very similar to European culture. You know, I think other regions are different because they may have uh, a major languages, uh, uh, like English in UK, US, and uh, Latin America is more about Spanish or Portugal, Portuguese. So I think that this language culture definitely play a big places because they're more willing, willing to work together because they are very small. Uh, another thing is we are used it to, uh, uh, you know, this linguistic culture is very important. And also our mindset, more willing to collaborate. We don't dominate other other culture, which is, I think, this is also very important. Um, how we collaborate, uh, I mean, how these two regions collaborated, I think that um, we should hold more uh, ad tech conferences or ad tech summit, because at the moment I can see that they're ad tech um, uh, Europe, but also we have ad tech Asia. Can we put them together? I think this is uh, a, a good idea because you can talk a little bit uh, what you did again because of these two cultures <laughs> that I just mentioned, I think it's very important, yeah.